Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This evening, to start our board meeting, we have a public hearing for the Fourth Amendment to Blue Heron Business Park's um, annexation agreement. I call the hearing to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Daney? Here. Gansey? Here. Sunstein? Here. Hopkins? Here. Court? Here. Swanski? Here. President Wallace? Here. As far as the public hearing the fourth, uh, for the Fourth Amendment to the annexation agreement of Blue Heron Business Park was published in the Daily Herald and mailed to the required taxing districts on March 1, 2024. The amended annexation agreement has also been available for public viewing in the Public Planning and Development Services Department. That being said, is there anything else, staff? No. Um, would anyone in the audience like to make any comments during the public hearing regarding this annexation? Is there anyone online that would like to make comments regarding this hearing? Any board members have any comments or questions? No. No. That being said, we will call this uh, hearing uh, to a close. Um, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Okay. By Trustee Daney, second by Trustee Suwanski. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Daney? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Enstein? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Swanski? Yes. This hearing is adjourned. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Village of Bartlett board meeting for March 19, 2024. I call the board meeting to order and ask the clerk to again please call the roll. Trustee Daney? Here. Gansey? Here. Gansine? Here. Hopkins? Here. Laporte? Here. Swanski? Here. President Wallace? Here. We have requested that uh, Reverend Catherine Irwin of Emmanuel United Church of Christ do our invocation this evening. Um, Reverend Irwin, thank you for being here. Absolutely, thank you for having me. If you can join me please in an attitude of prayer as you understand it to be. Gracious and loving God, holy one known by many names and beyond all names, spirit of life, spirit of love, spirit of community, spirit of justice, we ask your blessing on the people who have been given the privilege to lead this community in which we live and work and play. We give thanks for the members of the community who are here to listen, learn, and perhaps express their hopes and dreams for this village. As the agenda is discussed and the work and issues and opportunities before us are addressed, help everyone to keep the needs of all of our residents in their thoughts. Help those who gather to craft policies for our village that will always endeavor to care for and raise up all of those people who call this village home. In the name of the creating and redeeming God, many of us know so well through Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Welcome. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> <coughs> I love it when it gets cold in the middle of the time. All right, that moves us to our consent agenda this evening. All items listed with an asterisk will be enacted in one motion. There'll be no separate discussion on items on the consent agenda. That being said, would anybody like to add or remove anything from the consent? Yes, Mr. T uh, Mr. President, I'd like to add a couple of items. We all know it's pretty simple, the uh, underpass that we're talking about. So I'd like to add uh, items F1, F2, and F3. And also we have a uh, res resolution for a, uh, for a roof on the uh, crib, uh, which we desperately need, and uh, it's been bid out. It looks like it's a reasonable cost. And also, I'd like to add, uh, so that'd be F4, and I want to add F5. I mean, we don't have to have discussions on the front door of the Village Hall, I don't believe. So those are the items I'd like to add. Does anybody have any questions around those or discussion around those items? I have one question, but I think I can ask, ask it under uh, questions and answers. Okay. Good. Um, Trustee Laporte, any issues with adding those to the consent? No issues. I, I also would like to add... No uh, issues. A1, if I could. A1? Yes. We didn't have much discussion at the hearing. No, no. Anybody else have any issues adding that? 
Trustee Laporte, any problems with adding A1 to the to the consent? No, no issues. Excellent. I'll entertain a motion to approve the amended consent agenda, which will include the committee minutes from January 20, 2024, the board minutes from March 5, 2024. The consent will also be including the bills list from March 19, 2024. The consent this evening will also be adding item A1 under building and zoning. The consent also includes item A2. The consent will be adding items A F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5 to the consent. So moved. Second. Good by Trustee Daney, second by Trustee Sawanski. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Gansey? Yes. Gunstein? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Report? Yes. Sawanski? Yes. Daney? Yes. That motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve the amended consent. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Danny, second by Trustee Gunstein. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Gunstein? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Sawanski? Yes. Danny? Yes. Gansey? Yes. That motion carries. Moving on, next item on our agenda this evening is the Treasurer's Report. Mr. Treasurer? Thank you. Uh, included in the, this evening's board packet is the Treasurer's Report for the month of January. Also included is the sales tax report. Uh, we received $334,418. That represents October's activity. That was down about $4,000 or just over 1% compared to last year, October. Uh, for motor fuel tax, we received $137,000, up about $8,000 from the prior year, uh, slightly down from the prior two months, though. As far as income tax uh, sharing or the LGDF fund, we're up to $5,069,000 for this year. Um, that, would rep uh, that represents just the 6.47% um, if we were receiving the full 10%, we would be at 7.9 million at, at this time. Uh, so about 2.8 million short. So that is it for the treasurer's report unless there's any questions. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Anybody have any questions for Todd? Hearing none, we'll move on to planning and uh, to the President's report. The first very important item we have is to recognize um, a trader that's moved out of town. <laughs> <laughs> and I've requested, because of the long length of time um, that Trustee Daney has spent with um, Mr. Hopkins, uh, he would like to do the presentation. We're just going to recognize uh, Mark for his 27 years of service. Um, Mr. Trustee Daney. Well, I've had the privilege of being on the plan commission with Mark. I, he served 27 years, but uh, it would, I think we were together, what, 15 or 16 years together? And he was an asset to the plan commission. He was, I was chairman. And I always looked at, uh, at Mark for advice on how we should proceed. We talked during the week and whatnot at, at meetings. So congratulations, Mark, on your 27 years of service in the village. He's leaving us only because the boss, uh, I, our mayor, fired him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not true. That's the other boss right there. The other boss, Wendy, yeah. wanna, come on up here too, All right? Mark, I'd like to present you with this plaque. And I had to beg him to come back for the last two years. So, yeah. by the round of applause. Yay. to hear from you. Give that to his wife. from 
Mr. Hopkins. I actually wrote it down. It's All right. so important. All right. A couple of things I want to say. I'll make it real brief and merciful. <laughs> But now that I have you all under my power, right, I want to say a few things because it's very important to me. Um, so President Wallace, trustees, fellow commissioners, manager Schumacher, and all my friends in the room, I thank you so much for uh, honoring me because I want to say that Sue and I love Bartlett. We moved here in 1990 and we raised four sons with everything that goes with it, school and scouts and sports and church groups and bands and all the kids stuff. And Sue sat on the Citizens Advisory Committee advocating for Bartlett in U46. And she taught Sunday school for 19 years and she kept book for 65 seasons of baseball for our sons all told. So in 1991, that's 33 years ago, Catherine Melcher put me on the Economic Development Commission and five years later on the Plan Commission and I served ever since. We saw Bartlett grow like crazy. We saw subdivisions and retail centers one after the other. We saw our industrial developments and the Kohler Fields built, we saw the town center, we saw Bartlett High School built, and our four boys went through that. We saw some tough ones too, uh, the bale fill, the road that neither goes to Elgin nor O'Hare, <laughs> the Peaker plant and the CN takeover, all tough issues where our village government battled for us, the citizens. The hearings for the Peaker plant were so controversial, we were ro relocated to the Bartlett High School Theater to accommodate the crowd. <clears throat> and us commissioners were escorted in and out by the police. And Sue and I hadn't planned until only two months ago. We were gonna retire in the house we're in. Did you know we bought the old fire chief's house and we remodeled it and the EMT showed up to help one of our kids, looked around and said, I love what you did with the place. So our plan was we we're gonna live in that house until we get too old to, to be able to, to keep it anymore and then go down to Claire Oaks or Victory Center and after that end up in Bartlett Cemetery where our family plot is. <clears throat> my parents and my brother and my brother-in-law are there already. All within a mile. I guess we'll still end up at that last stop because that's the family plot. But the kids moved out of state and close together too. And now 11 grandkids later, we're moving closer to them. I want to leave you with something that you might not know about the Bartlett Municipal Government. Maybe Dan knows some of these things since he has to face other towns in his business. And I might have a somewhat unique perspective because I'm an architect and have stood as a petitioner in way too many municipalities in the Chicago metro area and in the tri-state area. I've dealt with way too many village managers, way too many village planners and building departments and public works and fire departments too in the 42 years I've practiced. I hate to say it, but in many towns, the atmosphere in the council chamber is this. The answer is no. Convince us why it should be a yes. Yeah, that's the, way, that's the way it operates. In Bartlett, there's an open attitude towards development under careful quality standards. I really think this has to do with the village board, the culture of the village board, because the character of any organization flows from the top down. I've seen appointed commissioners disregard ordinances and master plans, nitpick minutia, or make decisions on what they personally like or dislike. This doesn't happen much at all in Bartlett, and I've got to credit the preceding village attorney, Brian Moraz, for doing that 
and keeping us all informed on what's your purview and what's your mission and what ain't. And I urge the village attorney to keep up with that good tradition. I've seen managers and village planners that use their position as gatekeepers to apply their own personal policy in villages. Not in Bartlett. Here we have one of the best working relationships between elected officials and staff that I have ever seen. Not perfect, but one of the best. And lastly, in way too many public hearings, objectors are allowed to check their civility at the door, and I've heard outrageous things shouted, and meetings get out of control, but not in Bartlett. When the temperature starts to rise in this room, there's a courteous and calm control that prevails. So when you love something, you take care of it. Based on how you and you and the citizens have taken care of Bartlett, I, I think you all do really love Bartlett. And I want to mention a couple of folks, and then I'm done. Our village president has proved to be an able and talented leader as well as Cat Wrangler. <laughs> and I admire uh, the PNZ Chairman Worden for his gracious and welcoming style. He's a good ambassador for the village of Bartlett. You have a treasure in Christy Stone. She knows how to get things done the right way. And nobody loves Bartlett more than Pam Rolleader. Plus, she knows where all the skeletons are buried, so you better be good to her. Finally, Ray Daney turned out to be a mentor to me, kind of like a big brother. He lives for Bartlett, and I commend him to you. There's no one like him. Thanks for giving me the time to talk to you. Mark, you will be greatly missed, and we wish you the best of luck. I'll, uh, <clears throat> Mark, I'll text you when the meeting's over, okay? And to Bob, okay? All right. If you want to leave, I mean, I'll text you. All right. The show must go on, as they say in show business. The next item under the president's report, um, is the best taco award. Oh yeah. And um, it's gonna be hard to follow up Mr. Hopkins, but um, as we all know, coming off the best burger in Bartlett competition last uh, winter, staff organized uh, another um, food competition um, to get feet indoors at local restaurants. And I'm pleased to uh, announce that there were 1,296 votes were cast throughout the month. <clears throat> and 627, the overwhelming majority of those votes um, during the last year's comp or la this competition um, shows showing positive impact with our uh, businesses. 384 of those votes went to North of the Border Mexican Restaurant for the Best Taco <laughs> Award. <laughs> we have something under here for you. Oh yes. <laughs> that yeah. We're all enjoying your tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a picture of the We'll get you one and then you can bring in. And now you're, as, as the owner of uh, Dog Father, you might have the best hot dog picture. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I know, the pizza's going to be awesome. Who's in charge of that? We have to recognize whoever we've got the taco trophy. Is there a committee? Okay. All right. 
You guys wiped out everything on uh, consent for the standing committee report. So we've got a questions and answers. Yeah, I think uh, Trustee Hopkins had a question. Anyone else have any? You want to go first? Sure. I just think it uh, should be mentioned that staff did get, you know, you did go out and reach out to contractors to get prices. So we're not just like waving the bid to one contractor. I just think it's <coughs> worth mentioning. Good. Any other questions? Or yeah, a uh, couple of people I'd like to recognize. Uh, commissioners, we have uh, Jay Doherty. He's in Bike and Run Committee. He has one year. Dan Palmer, Bike and Run Committee, eight years. And Robert Perry, Economic and Development, he has 12 years. So congrats, guys, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else have any questions? No. Nope. Issues? Everybody looks like they're ready for a really long night of budget. Sure. We'll move on to the town hall portion of the committee. Um, anyone in the audience would like to address the um, board? Kindly step up to the podium and state your name and an address for the record. We do have one uh, comment card already, so if you want to call them, Lorna. George LeBron. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm no stranger here to the board. Hmm. Uh, several concerns I have about the community, and one is along Lake Street. It caught my eye last week where I saw several acres of land with trees all taken down. What a shame. And shame on us for allowing that to happen. You're looking at me like you don't understand what I'm talking about. I talk about Lake Street in 59 right on the exit of 59 going off of Lake Street. I believe the car dealership owns that property. And it's bad enough that you have like three football fields long of cars sitting out on 59 and Lake Street. It's an eyesore to our community, let alone three dealerships with cars all over the place. I just don't think it's appropriate and I don't agree with the decision. And my concern is I believe it's a residential zone property at this time and a concern that it may become a commercial and we may have another car dealership or something else there. So it is a concern of mine and I hope the board takes it seriously and thinks long about it because we keep tearing stuff down here in the name of progress. And I don't think it's all progress, as you guys know, my feelings about my situation and my fellow homeowners along Naperville Road. Two, in keeping with that theme, along Naperville Road, across the street from the church and Villa Olivia, basically on the east side nearest the church, you have a walking path there that's like Beirut. It's all torn up, it's all pot hellos, looks like hell. And then all the buckthorn along that road has all kind of garbage and trash in there for years. And I think we'd appreciate if the village could take a look at that and do something about it. Uh, you know, I mentioned to Mr. Hopkins a long time ago, yeah, four or five years ago when we had problems in our area and he noticed how uh, our streets were never taken care of or repaved. I always feel we're the stepchild of the village of Bartlett in, in our area because we're kind of far out there in a way and a lot of stuff goes on here. We really don't get enough attention. Uh, Lake Street and Naperville Road, it is such a hectic place to make a left turn. You have trucks coming down Lake Street, making a left-hand turn on Naperville Road. You could have, I've counted 10 trucks at one time making a left-hand turn. If you make a left-hand turn before, uh, 10 seconds after that light turns red, you're insane because the trucks and the cars just keep going through that intersection. I hear sirens and ambulances at least two or three times a week because, oh, you know I live off of Naperville Road and they're all due to accidents. I had my neighbor have two accidents making a right-hand turn because somebody passed the red light. And something really needs to be done about that. And I know it's a county road, I believe, but you guys are, are, are gatekeepers. And I, sometimes I don't feel you guys really go to the extra yard. I've been in business. I, I know what it's about to go and fight battles for people. And it, it's really important. 
in keeping with that theme, on Bartlett Road and 59, you guys have the new four lane, you know, the two lane turn lanes. And the last, I'm retired now, so I come back during the day from the gym and three, four o'clock, it's not unusual for people turning north off of Bartlett Road doing the same thing as they do on Lake Street and Naperville Road. I counted eight cars and trucks past the red light the other day, and then I came back from the gym the day after, and I counted six. I mean, guys, we gotta get a grip and control on the traffic in our village. It's insane. It's out of control in my eyes. Uh, Naperville Road, I know the thought process was that the truck traffic that comes down Naperville Road would kind of subside with the new lanes that are put in that we, I just mentioned. There has been some slight downtick coming from the Brewster Creek area. Some, remember, we're not in peak season as you all know. Once those trucks that come out with the, the gravel and the cement, it goes, it goes to hell there. But, excuse me, so the accidents. So if you're coming from Lake Street, turning left or right on Naperville Road, that traffic hasn't subsided at all. There's no plan for that. I know you put the roads in on 59 and Bartlett Road, but the traffic coming the opposite way hasn't let up at all. In theme with that, I know I was asked to hold off by Scott because he thought that was going to take care of a lot of our issues and the village was still working with my, our buddies from the county. Are there any updates about the last time I heard was with the grasslands with additional cars, of course, that we need more down that road, that they were going to be amenable to work with the village to look into the traffic situation, the safety, the speeding that goes on. And I know you guys tell me there's no speeding. There's speeding. And I just want to know if there's any update on that. Chief, you want to check into the intersections he was talking about? Um, and we'll try to figure out if we can add a little more patrol or something at Bartlett and, and the, the illegal turns that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, yeah. I know we. We discussed IDOT retiming that light at one point or requesting that because I think it is, it's very tough. Even if you're trying to get into Villa Olivia, you can wait up to 10 minutes. I think yeah, about that. it's not easy. What do? There's not much we can do there. And George, I would have you know, I'm in business too, and I've never had to do business with IDOT except for the last 10 years, and it's not, it's not possible. So yeah. it's, it's not something you can force. And believe me. Ever say no. Very forceful. I had a mentor the, tell me never say never. As far as um, the timing on the traffic signal, IDOT said that that's the best they can get. They do have a project that work, they're working on with the Shales Lake grade separation project, which will go through Naperville. And at that point, they're going to be improving Naperville and Lake at that point. Um, but that's still several years out. Several years. Is that light at Naperville going to be eliminated when IDOT has their full expansion over Shales Parkway? The light at Lake in Naperville? Lake or there. Lambert? Uh, no. They are gonna remain. There will still be lights at Lambert and Naperville. Um, they do have a dual left uh, going in at <coughs> Street to Naperville. Um, and they'll be making improvements with uh, the medians and all that stuff, right turn lane. Um, so there will be improvements. They're even looking at relocating Villa Olivia's entrance further south to get it away from the intersection. So um, there are improvements to come. It's just going to take. They're in. I think they're wrap. I think they wrapped up phase one. They'd be going to phase two. So you're looking at a couple, several years probably. Excuse me. Are the improvements that you're referring to are to allow more traffic to flow freely down Naperville Road? Well, we have more than enough traffic. Yeah, they're, I mean, when they look at the intersection, they look at the traffic that's there and they're trying to make it move. <laughs> so there will be improvements to the right turn lanes going northbound, eastbound. 
I do not believe they included a left, uh, they didn't say uh, dual left going northbound to westbound was warranted at this time, but they do have dual lefts going westbound to southbound. <clears throat> I know we've had, I've had conversations with Commissioner Morrison about looking at that aggressively, and it's numerous conversations over this year. I know Mayor Ke uh, Wallace has as well, so. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like it's falling on deaf ears with the county. I think uh, the more and more we call and keep pushing them, maybe change will happen, but. Yeah, we've had a lot of discussions with them. Thank you, George. We did, we did hear you, we hear you. Yeah, you're, that traffic on, on Naperville Road, I, I did ask a question where Scott had told me there was gonna be an update eventually that you guys are working with the county in regards to they would be more amenable because of the grassland and with additional traffic. I don't know why they have to wait for that. I mean, you guys all been down there and it's terrible. So is there any kind of new- There's, not, there's nothing in our, our power that we can do to change traffic patterns other than what we've done. What have we done? The speed limit we've is talked still- IDOT, We pushed IDOT to improve that intersection. Uh, what, George? Your time is Kevin, up. Okay, Kevin, Thank you. Uh, let me just say this. That intersection that you're referring to, it's not for Naperville Road's benefit. It's your TIF funds to make your Brewster Park and more facilities that you keep adding to that area have more access. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Does anybody else like to address the board at this time? Good evening, Michael Murphy, 1098 Horizon Drive. Uh, I'd just like to express some of my disappointment with the uh, Hyundai Genesis dealer. And uh, they have not been good neighbors in my opinion. Their transportation and moving from the parking lot to the main dealership um, is reckless. Uh, the police department's been notified. My understanding is they went in and briefed uh, the staff and management over there as to their expectations. I believe they're failing to live up to our agreement when we granted the development that they were supposed to turn right when they're exiting the access road and go down to the cloverleaf and do a double cloverleaf to come back west on Lake Street into the dealership. Since the dealership is open, they've been traveling through our neighborhood. Um, the porters are outstanding. I'm out there walking the dog, they'll wave to you, they make sure the kids, the school buses, they're good, they're good. The salesman or even a manager coming through, they're in a rush to get back to exchange a car, bring another color or a sample there. I've also know for a fact that they've been bringing customers into the storage lot and they have uh, to look at colors and to start their test ride from the, from the parking lot at the east end. I believe that is not part of our agreement. They're not licensed or insured. I have a question to the board. Is advertising permitted in the parking lot, in, this, in the overflow parking lot? Because now they're hanging banners over there and I, do we need an, uh, a sign permission, or is there an ordinance for advertising and signage? I don't think, Christy, there's any signage allowed over there, is there? Temporary signs are allowed. Directional. Directional, like temporary signs directional. are permitted. Yeah. But hanging light post banners, you know, like you would do in the village for a change of season, or? No. I don't, the dealership maybe itself, but at the off-site lot, I think we'll that's look into appropriate. That. We'll look into that. Please. Um, how do we go about as a line item? Now we have the development of the open acreage. My understanding is, after talking with the manager of the dealership, that that's their property, they own it. Is that true? Yes. Okay. So there was no requirement for a permit or a site plan 
to stop traffic, put heavy equipment on the S-turn, on the access road, and tie up traffic, make a hazard, leave a nuisance, and they can enter the, that property at any point in spot? No, that's a good question for um, our police department. Was, did you get any calls about traffic being blocked up or something? The only um, concern that I heard about, as he mentioned, um, some of the vehicles driving through the neighborhood. It's my understanding that Christy Stone, as, long, as well as Brian Simone, uh, met with the dealerships just to uh, try to get them off of uh, Horizon Drive. Yeah. As far as the blockage of a frontage road, that would be something you'd have to call the police and just say, hey, this is getting blocked, get them out here. Right. And then it'd be a ticketable event. It seems like the clear cut is complete, the street is clean, but during the last two weeks, the street was a mess. They did not maintain it. They abandoned it in the evenings, and it was just a nuisance to drive around. And that leads me to what I would ask staff to consider. That's, they're going to develop that property. My understanding is from the manager, he said he wants to put an access road back there. Obviously, Moretti's is in between it. Uh, now they've put up the erosion fence, so they are planning on doing developments. I haven't heard or can't find out. That's where I'd like your help, is to find out, have they applied for any permits or a site plan? Because to lose all that old growth trees uh, is, is a crime. Yeah. And to think I know other communities have in the past, you have to isolate the old growth trees and you develop around it, or at least you consider it. But for them to come in and completely flat cut that land is a terrible tragedy, as my neighbor just said ahead of me. So we need to develop a little wiser and better, as our previous chairman did, and hats off to him, hats off to the board. But here is what I would like to point you in the right direction or see if we can come to a, uh, some situation. We need to try to dedicate the roads, the access road there, off 20 and Horizon Drive, and see if we can dedicate that to the village. You want to develop it, you want to develop it in good faith, we need to do it. That road is not, cannot handle the traffic. You take that road right now, we go over there, send an inspector, it's substandard, it can't handle the traffic, it's torn up, I don't know who's patching it up, but there's been a couple of hot patches, and then when you go all the way down into their new gate, there's a curb cut for about 30 yards out of the entire length of the project. Um, there needs to be more attention to detail and to handle that and the increased traffic for all the people. And I didn't even talk about them making the left turns and tying up the entire subdivision, which we just went through with the previous uh, speaker. So how do we go about, and I would urge maybe somebody to make a motion or assign something to a staff or a commission to dedicate that and try to get that road back from Cook County. Yeah, I'm sure that we'll look into um, additional discussion on what's that road. Happen. That road um, is under the jurisdiction of IDOT. Yeah, and we can certainly ta um, talk to them about that. Um, we do not have a development application in on that piece of property. Um, normally, um, we do protect trees when we have a development agreement coming or development application in. Um, that's the time at which we have the ability to um, restrict um, tree removal. Um, this was done before any kind of application was made. Yeah. So there's nothing in front of the My board. understanding is they turned down that piece of property a couple of years ago when this development started. Now all of a sudden they come back, they're developing it. They know better than to not talk to the village about this, to find out how do we get, how do they get access to that property without tying up that culvert or damaging that culvert and the water runoff as we know it today? Well, I, I can tell you this would probably be better discussion offline. Um, your three minutes are up for the discussion on the board level. But we get your point. We understand your point. Um, I'm sure that we could have you talk to one of the staff members and explain to you what's coming up on the board eventually, probably within the next month or two, uh, uh, concerning that property. Um, none of us on this board likes to see beautiful trees cut down. I can guarantee you that. 
Um, but when it comes to somebody purchasing a, a plot of property and knocking trees down on their own property, they can't. They don't have to ask our permission. I understand that, but that's just a, a example of bad faith. Yeah. And my, how would you? Could you assign this to a commission, and or take take on a line item to dedicate Horizon Drive access to Cook County Road? What, what, what we can commit to doing is discussing it before, uh, when, as soon as somebody comes in with an application saying they're going to do some kind of uh, uh, building on that property or put something there, that's when we have some power. That's when we have some power. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming in. Anyone else in the audience like to address the board at this time? Chris or John, anyone online? No, no, Mayor. All righty. Moving on to standing committee reports. In lieu of each of you telling me that everything was on consent agenda, we will move down to new business. Does anyone have any new business for the good of the order? Any questions for staff? I entertain a motion to adjourn the board meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Danny, second by Trustee Gunstein. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Hopkins? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Sawanski? Yes. Danny? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Gunstein? Yes. The board is adjourned.